How to become smarter. While we are all equally capable, some of us make the mistake of going with the flow. This is where we get stuck, our intelligence becomes overwhelmed, and our mind slowly slow down. The reasons for the slow down are as simple as scary. Loneliness, fears, sadness, and most frightfully so, stress and overwork. Slowly, all of this conspires to rob the world of color and make us tired, weak, and prematurely old. This is the state that people think is lack of intelligence. Politicians even have a name for it, the Joe Sixpack mode of existence. Worthless teachers call it, he's going to be a factory worker. Over a very long stretch of time, humans became predisposed to listen to elders without evaluating whether or not those elders are worth listening to, without a question or worry. When we are young, we simply sit and listen. Hello, teacher, tell me what's my lesson. Blindly accepting what we are told marks the absolute beginning. This is where we enter the stream that eventually makes us so weak that we feel we just aren't smart. To be fair, this may be an evolutionary adaptation. Long ago, those who didn't listen to the elders would get eaten by the hippo or stung by the insects or bitten by snakes. But that was long ago and it's probably just conjecture. Things have changed now. Self-education is well within our reach. Nietzsche asks... What if a demon were to creep after you one night in your loneliest loneliness and say, This life which you live must be lived by you once again and innumerable times more. And every pain and joy and thought and sigh must come again to you all in the same sequence. The eternal hourglass will again and again be turned, and you, with it, speck of dust. Would you throw yourself down and gnash your teeth and curse that demon? Or would you answer, Never have I heard anything more divine. Bukowski adds, How in the hell could a man enjoy being awakened at 8.30 a.m. by an alarm clock, leap out of bed, dress, force feed, shit, piss, brush teeth and hair, and fight traffic to get to a place where essentially you made lots of money for somebody else and were asked to be grateful for the opportunity to do so. But I think it's Kurt Vonnegut that really nails it when concluding one of his works with a wish that Kilgore Trout makes. Make me young again. Make me young again. Make me young again. And what a powerful and revealing sentence that is. The stream takes you down river, taking everything away, health, joy, youth, and even love of life. Stress poisons us with obesity, depression, and it only gets worse from here. I think feeling unintelligent is not only natural at this point, 
but also the least of it. What it actually is, is our mind, our beautiful mind, gently ringing an alarm bell. You are a warrior. We are all descended from great warriors. You can get through anything, any challenge. But that does not mean you should tolerate shitty co-workers, overwork, stress, and early death. Sometimes an end that comes 50 years too early because of all the stress and consequence. It means you went too far. It means you used the power of a warrior for trash. It means no more work tomorrow. It means you have quit your job right now. Hit the pause button and go and unplug your stupid, stupid alarm clock. That thing should have never been in your house. It was torture. The first three days are very important because the toxicity that has built up in you is warped right around your perception, right around your brain. You will question your decision not to go to work like crazy out of your insanity, the insanity that has been creeping up on you, that would eventually turn you into a lonely creep. Don't just resist it. Study it. Study the thing that had kept you floating downstream so that you never make the stupid mistake ever again. Study how hard you want to serve for a shitty, worthless paycheck. For an easy Monday. For an easy check and an easy end. And Wednesday can never come too soon. Get a journal. Write down how you feel. But for no more than half a page. The journal is for joy. Leave pain out of it. In a couple of months, whatever you write in there today or tomorrow will make you very sad and show you how chained you are. You will see that because you will be happy then. You will be healing. It will take a few months. If you want to, you can go hiking immediately. If it's nice and warm outside, go find a state park or a popular camping area. If you're in the U.S., try driving all the way down south to Florida Keys, where there's always warm ocean. You shouldn't worry about money right now because you are fighting for survival away from obesity, away from stress. But there are two wise and noble things that you can do. First, as you begin working out to repair your body and remove the premature aging, you will learn from your own experience how to be a trainer and a trail guide. You will be getting paid for guiding people across the Appalachian Trail, for helping people learn how to use an interval timer or Couch to 5K and similar programs. It's hard work, but you will love it because every bit of it will be honest and it will count for something real. It will count for greatness. Unlike fighting your way out of poverty that has been put there by politicians to turn you into a worker because they don't know how else to make the world a livable place. 
And second is learning computer programming and design. It is for all and it is for you. Just begin with P5JS tutorials and you'll do great. You may listen to them and many other JavaScript tutorials on the trail. You don't need to look at what's going on. You just need to ease yourself into the entire ecosystem. The world of health is a world of simplicity. It is a world of greatness. Which brings us to repairing your education. Your teachers betrayed you. They were just trying to get paid. They were not educating you. If anything, they were training you, manufacturing you. Your first day away from your job begins with a trip to get narrated books or audiobooks at the library. Begin with an audiobook entitled Giants of Philosophy, which is narrated by Charlton Heston. And prepare for a follow-up with The Story of Philosophy, a beautiful work by Will Durant. But that is your next step. First, you need adventure books, every one of them. Begin with Bill Bryson, move on to John Krakauer, and then just follow everyone else. Bryson should lead you to science popularizers, an introduction to clear thinking like no other. All of these books will fit your trail lifestyle, your new style. So as long as you quit work and walk the Appalachian Trail to repair your body, you will do great. But exiting the mistakes that you were coerced into is just the first part of your journey, of your rise. You will need to begin building a legacy to put an end to mistakes that got you personally. You are being asked to stop following and grow all the way up until you become a great being. You were never unintelligent or less smart, and your poverty was always there on purpose to make you work. That is not how a human being lives. Life is precious. It is one. I will close with Henry's words, who put it so beautifully. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear. Nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life, to live so sturdily and spartan-like as to put to rout all that was not life, to cut a broad swath and shave clothes, to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest term. Remember, get rid of your alarm clock, go shopping for a journal, and start putting your hiking gear together. It's over. There's no more work. Right now you are beginning a new life. You will become fit. You will walk the Appalachian Trail many times. You will guide many people towards health and enlightenment.